guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews and Terry gonna be reviewing this all new 2022 Kia Stinger GT line. And before we start, I wanna give a huge thank you to Darius and the rest of the management and staff here at Regal Kia in Lakeland, Florida for making this review possible. These guys are awesome. I'll leave a link to their inventory below. And if you're in Florida looking for a new car, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Darius. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Stinger has been Kia's rear wheel drive sports sedan since 2018. That's when the first generation was released. We received the facelift for 2020. And this vehicle is available in two different trim levels in the United States. First one being the two and a half liter turbo four cylinder making a really healthy 300 horsepower, 311 pound-feet of torque. Excellent power numbers for the money. You can upgrade to a 3.3 liter twin turbo V6, which makes 365 horsepower and 376 pound-feet of torque, making this a really no joke sports sedan doing zero to 60 in the mid fours. However, here we have the GT line trim, base model starting around 36,000 bucks. Let's see what we get. So up front, you notice this absolutely gorgeous blue metallic paint matched with this black headlight housing for the headlights, LED headlight lights with the daytime running strips too. And I'm really liking this pattern on the side, turn signal outside of it, functional air curtain for this corner over here. We also have heat extractors outside, which we'll check out in one second. Blacked out grill, kind of have the tiger tooth design to it, flowing along with Kia's lineup. Again, really good airflow for your intercooler and radiator, nice panel in the center grill, housing your advanced safety features. The paint too, that's some really, really nice blue metallic. Hopefully you guys can pick it up right here in this Florida sun. But as far as this wheel and tire setup, also a really impressive part of this Kia Stinger GT line. Here we get these beautiful cross jaggedy spoked 18 inch rims wrapped in 225-45 R18 Bridgestone Potenza all season tires. Some of the better performing all seasons in the business. Nothing crazy when it comes to the brake setup, just a dual piston caliper for the front. No plastic cladding either. Everything is nice, clean body color with a heat extractor right outside, as you mentioned. Blacked out mirrors, they have like a chrome finish to them too. You can see my reflection pretty easily. I'm actually liking them quite a bit, contrasting this beautiful paint. No tints or anything that could be done after market. Blacked out B pillar, as you notice, that really nice black panel for your sunroof package. That's gonna be the only option on this Stinger. I really like the design. It's just, I kind of wish that the black theme continued for the rest of the roof. Anyway, smart access for the driver and the front passenger, nothing out rear, wouldn't really be expected for a vehicle starting at 36,000 bucks. But anyway, as far as this window sticker, you guys can check it out. So of course, 2022 Stinger GT line, rear wheel drive, micro blue metallic with a beige interior, really beautiful interior too. Two and a half liter turbo gas, direct injection, GDI four cylinder engine, made it to a eight speed automatic transmission with paddle shifters. Drive mode select with Eco Smart Comfort Sport and Custom. We'll start this review in comfort transition to sport, see what the differences are. The driver assist technology standard on a $36,000 Stinger includes blind spot avoidance assist, rear cross traffic alert, safe exit warning, forward collision avoidance assist with pedalist cycle and junction. We get smart cruise control, stop and go, lane keep assist, lane following assist, lane departure warning. You can take a look at all the safety features. Interior includes this leather seat trim, real genuine leather, not no Syntex, 10.25 touchscreen with navigation, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, rear view camera with dynamic guidelines, dual zone full automatic climate control, wireless phone charger, also standard on $36,000 Kia Stinger GT line. I'm telling you, this is probably the best value sports sedan in the business. We also get multi-way power adjustable driver's seat. And since we have the optional sun and sound pack package, that also includes a power adjustable front passenger seat. Rear seat temperature adjustable vents. Also, unbelievable features, guys. 18 inch alloy wheels, LED MFR headlights, and LED taillights, heated outside mirrors, best warranty in the business. Base price, of course, $36,090 after a $2,300 sun and sound package, which is the only package in this vehicle. We get the Harman & Kardon Premium Audio System. Sounds very good. Doesn't sound great. Not, not the most bass, but it's a very crisp and clear sound system. Definitely a thumbs up compared to the bass. Power adjustable front passenger seat, of course, is included in that package. Sunroof, which is the wide type. That's why we get this really nice black panel. I do wish it continued, but still a huge thumbs up for the sunroof. Carpeted floor mats for rear wheel drive, 155 wheel locks for 60 bucks. Thousand dollar destination charge, total price 30, 39, 650 bucks. MPG is also impressive, 25 combined, 22 city, 32 highway, similar to the MDX, not MDX, the TLX uh, A-Spec that we reviewed recently on this channel. Same wheel and tire setup out rear. We don't get a staggered setup, still a 225 with these 18s, just a smaller brake caliper will be your only difference. The gas cap is not pushed open. I'll show you where the latch is inside. LED taillights, 
turn signals and the reverse lights quad exhaust tips not a functional heat extractor but that little thing right there really aids the rear aggressive styling of course this is a hatchback not quite a true sedan but i'm gonna still call it a sedan because it looks way more like a sedan than a hatchback you see that light pattern connects the two tail lights shout out regal kia here in lakeland florida gt line badge right next but i'm getting swarmed with bugs right now i can't wait to get inside this car singer badge quad exhaust tips are not true tips they're just outlined in these faux chrome tips and the diffuser also really aggressive looking rear parking sensors that's about it though let's take a squat back here start this 2.5 turbo up and hear how she sounds All right, guys, that was, of course, the sound of the two and a half liter turbo sold by Kia for this 2022 Stinger GT. It sounds pretty good for a turbo four cylinder, but as far as the engine itself, huge thumbs up for the struts. Really appreciate it. There you have it, though, your two and a half liter turbo making 300 horsepower, 311 pound feet of torque, enough to get this rear wheel drive sports sedan or a hatchback to 60 in the mid to high five second range, making it a really, really good performing vehicle. Considering the price range, it knocks the competition completely out of the ballpark. It's actually ridiculous, 36,000 bucks and you're competing with vehicles like the BMW 3 Series and Infiniti Q50, and you're not really missing that much when it comes to interior luxury, which we'll check out in one second. You notice your strut tower braces, really, really impressive setup. We can shut this hood right here, take one more step back, get a good look at that front styling. I am loving those daytime running lights and the headlights themselves, really premium look. As far as this interior though, also a huge part about the Stinger GT line, like one of the best interiors in the segment compared, considering the price. You see all these bugs though? That's absolutely ridiculous amount of bugs. But stepping inside, soft touch for the upper portion. We get some leather stitch trim for the middle, leather armrest, super soft, auto one touch for the front too. You get four-way adjustable mirrors, power folding too. Really impressive touch. You get three speakers on the door panel for your Harman and Kardon system too as far as storage you can probably get a 16 ounce in here uh, make sure the lid is tightly closed because it is angled sideways stepping inside no singer nameplate not really a big deal these seats though full leather gt line badging right up top i like the beige too good bolstering support very supportive seats full adjustability too four-way lumbar recline drop lift and slide the seats as well this car is really impressive guys check this out we'll take a step inside boom away from the bugs We'll turn this air down by a couple so you guys can hear a little bit better. But anyway, as far as the steering wheel, really thick design, great 10 and 2 bolstering notch. The 9 and 3 fits just about perfectly in your hands. Flat bottom, GT line on the bottom, updated Kia badge as far as the horn. Pretty aggressive horn. People should definitely be getting out of your way. Dashboard's all stitched. Stitch material for the center portion too. I'm liking the Camaro Mercedes style air vents too. Really aids when it comes to the premium look of this interior. As far as the steering wheel controls, volume, voice commands, mode, AM, FM, or Sirius, call, favorites, and you skip the songs right over here. On the opposite side, you have active steering, lane keep assist, radar cruise control, and you can adjust the infotainment little screen with these buttons. So we can go between accumulated info, turn by turn and compass, advanced heads up display, atten attention level, digital speedo, and tire pressure. We have to be driving to see the tire pressure, my personal favorite to look at at all times to just be this digital speedo. So we'll just leave it there. To the left, we get a 6,500 RPM tachometer with the coolant temperature beneath 180 mile an hour speedometer with the gas gauge beneath 180 for the speedometer is also impressive. My Camaro only has a 160 mile an hour speedometer with a 455 horsepower V8. The turn signal stock, super satisfying to click. We get auto headlamps, rain sensing wipers, another Huge thumbs up. This is a loaded, loaded vehicle, guys. Aluminum paddle shift. They're just plastic, but they look and feel like they have an aluminum texture to it. To the left of the steering wheel, we get the interior brightness, lane keep assist, and our gas tank release. Not a, not a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel, but not really a big deal. Wouldn't really be expected. You can get a good look at your aluminum pedals and your floor-mounted accelerator pedal. As far as this map, we get the 10.25-inch screen. Super responsive Kia, you know, has been killing it with their screens lately. Very good resolution. Huge thumbs up. You know they've been killing it lately. As far as the home, we get the navigation menu. You can see everything that's available. I know the vents are probably blowing directly into the microphone right now, but just 
just want to give you guys a good sense of what's available. My personal favorite to look at at all times would just be this map. Air vents beneath, shortcuts if you don't want to be going through the touchscreen. Dual zone auto climate control. Heated seats, no cooled seats. Not really a big deal, $36,000 base price. We get 12 volt USB port and a wireless charger. Great feature for this price point. We have this little thing. You push it out of the way and it closes everything up. Gear selector controls your eight speed automatic transmission with manual shift modes. They're not in the proper directions, but since we have paddle shifters, I'm not really going to knock it. As far as the backup camera, you guys can see pretty good resolution. Not the best, but definitely more than good enough. Rear, par rear parking sensor is right next to it too. Throwing it back into park and it returns immediately to the map. The cup holders have these flappy things which should keep your drinks nice and in place. Electronic parking brake, auto hold, drive mode select, which includes, as you mentioned, uh, smart, eco, comfort, and custom, and sport. We'll start this review off in comfort and then transition into sport. See what the differences are, and you can see your parking camera at all times. Next to it, you can turn off your auto start stop, which for the purpose of this review, we will. A little bit of additional storage back over here. As far as the armrest for the center console, it's pretty soft, not the softest. A little bit softer than my Camaro. I'm liking the contrast stitching. You can open it up as far as space. I'm liking the tray. You can put some business cards, some coins in there. And as far as this center console area, pretty spacious. I would expect you to fit maybe five or six 12 ounce cans with no issues whatsoever. So definitely accommodating as far as the glove box. You can pull this latch, damped, lined with felt, massive you're fitting at least 20 25 license plates like this is an unbelievably luxurious interior guys i can't wait to take this car out for a drive engine start stop really a loaded vehicle frameless mirror no garage home link settings on it but it's auto dimming too we mentioned the sunroof we can open up the shade it doesn't really extend for the entire roof area but since the vehicle needs to be stru structurally secure you wouldn't want the entire roof to be made out of glass we can open this thing up though it just lays on top of this sport sedan sport hatch but let's see if it opens any farther that's about it we can poke our way out of here it's a beautiful day today in lakeland florida it's sunny and 80 degrees we can shut this sunroof up we'll leave the shade open so when we hop out back you guys can get a good sense of how much light is brought into this cabin but as we mentioned that's about it for this front seat area let's hop out back see how much space is offered back there as well as the overall quality of the materials all right guys stepping in the back seat look at these bugs this is a ridiculous amount of bugs but anyway taking a step over here soft touch for the upper portion leather stitch for the middle no auto one touch for the rear passengers but not the biggest deal super soft for the armrest decent storage and you get three speakers the seats padding goes all the way out to the door frame still perforated leather seats beige leather really beautiful legroom i'm six feet tall sitting behind my seat settings and yeah maybe not the most when it comes to the legroom, but I still have at least like two inches of space, two air vents, temperature is adjustable even for the back seat passengers, 12 volt and a USB port. Cargo nets behind both of the front seats. The center armrest has a string attached to it so we can check it out. Nice soft leather, two cup holders with a pass-through, good spot for a phone. Impressive interior lighting, LED, and you can see the sunroof brings in quite a bit of light and this beige, interior color just makes it such a more friendly environment in this back seat area very impressive interior guys let's check out the trunk real quick and then take this 2022 stinger gt line out for a drive all right guys to get into this trunk you simply press the button right underneath the g for the stinger hydraulically assisted uh, hatch i'll call it a hatch instead of a trunk nice size floor you can see pretty decent amount of space and it's deep i can't touch those seats unless i lean my entire body into this area a little bit of secret storage i'll move these wheel locks out of the way and you can access your jack and fix a flat kit pretty nice overall you can also remove that that tunnel cover and have a little bit more overall space you can also throw some hats on the tunnel cover so people behind you can see what you're currently like interested in or whatnot but the tunnel cover does a great job hiding the hatch area from other people's eyes when they walk by your car they're not going to see what's in there so if you're hiding anything that you shouldn't be the tunnel cover will protect you. But other than that, that's about it for the 2022 Stinger GT line, interior and exterior. Let's take it out for a drive. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of this all new 2022 Kia Stinger GT line. Let's take it out for a drive. And the first thing I notice is even in comfort mode, the steering feels directly on center. Really nice feeling rack. But as soon as we take a step out over here onto this multiple lane, highway we can lean into it never mind no we can't we have a red light coming up but that's just give us a good opportunity to try 
and acceleration off the line, and I'll catch back with you in one second. All right, guys, off the line, right over here. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, this thing can get up and get to speed real quickly, and unlike the K5 GT and the Hyundai Sonata N-Line or the, the, the Calligraphy Santa Fe's, any cars that use this power plant with front wheel drive, this actually puts the power down, so you can slam the gas pedal off the line, and even in first gear, you're picking up speed, you're not burning up your tires. This 2.5 liter turbo feels so much better with a rear wheel drive setup compared to the front. It's, it's night and day. You can actually use the power in first, second gear without just wasting your tires. So it'll be really nice to see the K5 GT Hyundai Sonata N-Line to implement either a all wheel drive system or just convert the vehicles into rear wheel drive, which I know is not gonna happen, but hopefully in the next year or two, we can get a all wheel drive option for both the N-Line and the K5 GT. Taking a step out onto this little back road. We have some train tracks right here. Really smooth and quiet. This vehicle has dual pane windows. Yes, it has dual pane windows which is an absolutely unbelievable feature for a car in this segment. But let's try out these manual shift modes, throw the car into sport, see how it is. Pretty responsive. Ooh, oh, it automatically downshifts you into second too. And you like lean into the gas pedal too hard. But right here, ooh. Guys, this thing rips. Uh, we can calm down a little bit over here and I'll catch back with you. But all right, we can downshift right here. Woo! Yeah, this thing short shifts a little bit around like 40, I mean, around like 5,700 RPM, we get a little bit of a short shift, but I guess not the end of the world. We'll let this guy in front of us have a little bit of space. We'll try to hit this little sharp turn a little quicker than we should. Looks like he's making a right turn. Best case scenario for us. Wow, great handling. Oh, nice. It definitely short shifts you a little bit on the brakes. Brakes feel nice, turning it in. Woo. Guys, this thing can handle. <laughs> and it sounds pretty good too. Unfortunately, like when you're in third gear and you floor the pedal, it will downshift you into second, but not the biggest deal. We'll throw it right back into comfort mode, take it out of these manual shifts. Comfort mode, make a left right over here. The throttle gets a lot less sensitive, noticeably less sensitive. And we'll step out onto this concrete pavement, check out the road noise. Not bad. You hear a little bit. Steering is still super direct, even in comfort mode. I'm really liking this car, guys. For 36,000 bucks, I, I probably wouldn't option the Harman and Kardon in the sunroof. I'll just leave it as close to the $36,000 base price as you possibly can. But for that money, this is this is the best sports sedan you can possibly get for that money, not even close. Again, the main competition for this car are vehicles like the Cadillac CT4, CT5, uh, Dodge Charger with the six cylinder, I guess. But this thing performs like the Dodge Charger RT and it also competes with cars like the BMW, 3 Series, the Infiniti Q50, and this car just undercuts all of those others while still being just as impressive of a performer. I would definitely recommend anybody looking for a sports stand to check this one out. And taking a step right over here, we're still in comfort mode. We'll throw it into sport right here. Try out these manual shifts. Second gear on the gas. First gear. Yeah, see, it automatically shifts you, but gosh, this thing flies. Throwing it in. Wow, stays flat. Whew. This thing is a blast. Wow. Uh, but again, we don't have to be pushing it too much harder than that. I can feel this lane keeping assist kind of interventing at times, like nudging me back towards the center of the lane, which is cool. It doesn't beep or anything like that. It just kind of takes over the steering wheel to make sure I'm driving as close to the center as possible. But again, we'll take it out of sport because it seems like we're just holding revs at around 2,600. Put it back into comfort mode. The steering gets lighter, but still super direct. As you see, we're changing directions with very minimal input. Ride quality, good. Good, I'm not gonna say it's great ride quality, but considering how well this vehicle can handle 
I would definitely say that this car has a good ride quality. And just cruising along thanks to these dual pane windows, the interior is so, so quiet. This road is a very nice road when it comes to like road quality, but still, you hear no wind. We'll take one more step out to that highway one more time, get to speeds around like 50, 55, see if the wind noise picks up. But with these dual pane windows, this interior is really quiet. Got a couple more twisties. We'll do them in comfort mode. Super direct. It responds immediately. This chassis feels really nice. I, if you're in the market for a sporty sedan and you're looking at one from Kia, being like the K5 GT, I would spend the, the, the extra couple thousand and just go for the Stinger GT line. This car is so much better. But, all right guys, one more time. Comfort mode on the gas. Woo. Goodbye. Wow, yeah. This thing can move. And cruising along, at around highway speeds, yeah, you hear a little bit of wind noise. Even with these dual pane windows, you hear a little bit. It's a pretty windy day right now in Lakeland, Florida. But yeah, I'm not gonna lie, you hear, you hear a little bit of wind noise, but for the most part, it is competitive with this segment and really impressive. But all in all, guys, I am really impressed with this all new 2022 Stinger GT line. I understand that Kia is planning on getting rid of this car. So if you're in the market for a Good performing, well spacious, mid-size sports sedan or compact sports sedan because the back seat space isn't really that great. I would definitely put this one on your list. $36,000 base price. You're not getting anywhere close to this level of performance and luxury from any of the competition. The K5 GT has similar um, interior quality, has a slightly larger back seat. And as far as like on paper performance, it's it seems just as good. But I'm telling you, when it comes to putting the power down, the K5 GT struggles hard in first and second gear and you can even break those wheels loose in third so if you really want to prioritize actual performance and fun for the money i would spend the extra couple thousand bucks and just go with a stinger 100 percent other than that guys i want to give a huge thank you to regal kia here in lakeland florida for making this review possible and a huge thanks to darius for helping me get the keys to this beautiful stinger gt i'll leave a link to their inventory below and if you're in the market for a new vehicle in the florida area I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Darius. Other than that though, huge thanks to all you guys for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know I have endless gratitude for all subscribers. You know, the channel's just not possible without you guys. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Um, leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars or trucks you'd like to see reviewed in this channel too. And I'll definitely try to get those videos for you as soon as possible. But other than that, again, hope you enjoyed this video half as much as I did. And I hope all you guys have a great day.